wear this one. I was oh. going to wear that shirt. That, that is been, something. That's been that, awkward. That's something that Bob and I have done often. Is yeah. wear the same fucking nice. shirt. Yeah. yeah. Back in I the day. I made a point. I was like, I'm not going to wear a TNS like shirt just today. Yeah. Just for once. Yeah. So. But um, no, I appreciate you guys coming on, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the mm -hmm. HWMF podcast. I'm your host Seth Ferrosi. Here with Shaner. Bob is still on vacation, but we have two guests on today that came in from out of town. They are from both from North Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My bad. Same it's the same thing. fucking yeah, place to pretty me. Pretty much. Yeah, Pennsylvania is still yeah. the same. <laughs> Philly and Pittsburgh, they're right next to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no big deal. Um, no, but uh, we have Justin Hall, Supplement Snoop. Mm -hmm. who, um, these two guys are from behind the scenes. You guys are actually like a little bit not on the forefront of everything. Yeah. Uh, from an industry standpoint, not everybody knows what you two right. do, so we're going to fill it in. Yeah. And we have Jacob, I forget your last yeah, name. Yeah, Davis. Jacob, Jacob Davis, Davis yeah. who yeah. owns the, sup, uh, the nutrition store That's in correct. South Carolina. You're a young guy, 25 years old. That's me. Own one store, getting ready to open up a second. We're working on it. You were one of our first buyers from yeah. back in the day yeah. when we first opened up Axe and Sledge. <laughs> so this has uh, been a long time coming. But uh, for everybody that doesn't know, you two gentlemen, I'll give you a second to uh, talk here. Uh, introduce yourselves and what you exactly do, because especially, yeah. Justin, you mm -hmm. have a very unique place in the industry, mm -hmm. kind of paving your own path. I agree, yeah. It's something that um, hasn't really been done yet. Yeah. I don't see it much. I've seen people kind of try, but you not put in the effort and the work that you have to build what you have. So um, super interesting. We have a, a store owner here, super young, and you have your own views, Jacob, on what you want to do to build, because... Yeah. There's thousands, tens of, of thousands of stores out there, mm -hmm. and you being 25 years old and taking a chance on yourself and investing in yourself, and you have your own aspirations on how you want to do things right. in the supplement store industry. Yeah. Which yes. everybody wants to open up a supplement store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, 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 or open up I a supplement. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> everybody wants to open yeah. up a supplement company, but like we say, dude, there is more than one way to skin a fucking cat. Yep. There are tons of different ways, and the same thing goes for opening up a store. There is... You can have a store that has these companies or this way or this way of doing business and that and this. And it's going to be interesting because I think a lot of people, um, you know, they have questions. You guys are, I guess we could say, behind the scenes mm -hmm. of the industry. Not the yeah. forefront, not an athlete, right. but an educator such as yourself, uh, Justin, yeah. and you owning a store and yeah. paving your own path yourself. So um, we'll start with you, Justin. Perfect. Supplement Snoop yes. on Instagram. Everybody mm -hmm. go follow him. Uh at Supplement Snoop, yes. please give an introduction to exactly what you do in the industry. Right. So, I, I, well, I think like the easiest way for me to explain to people is I'm a, I'm a consumer. I'm a supplement consumer. I was the type of person that I was taking supplements for a long time and, you know, but I'm working, you know, you're working a career, you're using supplements just to try to feel good about yourself, go to the gym. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what I was taking. You know, and I remember one day I'm looking at a whey protein tub and I'm going man I'm like what is this shit that's in this tub like is this even safe is this good and, you know you see all the marketing and all the ads and everything like that so I started going online and I'm like okay I started doing a little research and I was like wow this is really like fucking hard to find the real information about what this stuff is because I would type in an ingredient and it would be like ad for this company and ad 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 and this is like the greatest ingredient ever and I'm like no, this is not helping me so I'm like okay there's got to be an app to tell me all this stuff, right? Because apps are apps, everywhere. Apps especially do everything. You're probably speaking about how long ago was this? This is this is a few years ago, probably like the whole idea started probably about five years ago. Uh -huh. So I'm like, okay, apps are everything. Yeah, everything. So I'm, I'm like, okay, I go in the store and I'm looking, and you could kind of see some efforts to, towards it, but I was like, this is just not. And I'm like, shit. There's no app to tell me. I was like, I need this information. And I know other people want this information too. People that I worked out with at the gym have no idea what supplements do. So anyway, I'm like, I guess that's what I'm going to do. I guess I'm going to make an app. And I was like, I have no idea about supplements. I have no idea how to make an app, but I feel like this should be a thing. So, so all this <laughs> right there, you were like, I don't know what's in this, but no I idea. feel like I could, there's a, there's a space for you yes. for something you really don't know too much about yet. Exactly. And I thought that was like kind of the thing I wanted to learn myself. So I was like, okay, I think while I do this, I can help other people sort of along the way. So that's how the app started. And it, this would, the whole story would take 24 hours to me to tell all the ups and downs and crazy shit. But long story short, I wanted to get in the actual education part of it because what I noticed was so much of the supplement space was sponsored athletes telling me that this is the best shit ever. And then all of a sudden you start to see, and a lot of them look the same, 
And I'm like, well, well, how come this one? I'm like, that doesn't make sense to me. So I'm like, let's dig down to the actual ingredients. And no one was really doing it that well that I could find. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to do this. So we started taking it from ground level education, trying to understand. And not only that, but you start to read about these ingredients. It's all science studies. I didn't, I'm not a doctor. I didn't no, go to a fucking scientist. I didn't go to medical heads. school, right? <laughs> but, you're, exactly. but, but for you to think like this, and you're not an idiot. You're a very intelligent person. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Leave it at that. <laughs> but but so I'm like, okay, now how do I take this stuff, these these studies, these things, and, and put it in terms where – you know, the the dad that doesn't have time, you know, all he's trying to do is find something to help him make, be a better father, have some more energy for his kids. Um, the mom, you know, that's working, taking care of the kids in the home, she's putting everyone else's needs above hers. She doesn't have time or sometimes the aptitude to understand all this stuff. So I'm like, how do I explain this stuff in the simplest, quickest way possible to all these people out there that need help? Plus, I was like, I can't do it with advertisements. Mm -hmm. I don't want supplement companies. I don't want to be tied to supplement companies because I saw what was going on. I was like, I don't know what's going on. I was like, but I don't like this. Well, that's the thing right now is that uh, people that do do reviews on supplements are paid reviews. So it's like if I give you three Gs, you'll review my supplements and talk well about it. It'll be the best stuff ever. And and, and that's understandable. That's part of the game. That's part of the industry. And everybody plays to it. And and that's there. And it's not uh, talking bad about those. Definitely. But whenever it all of a sudden becomes like there's 20 companies out there willing to give you three Gs a piece <laughs> per month. And you're like, hey, this is a really cool gig. Right. I'm on to some shit here. Right. Yeah. Making real money, big money, and it's going well. Mm-hmm. So again, business is business. But that wasn't what you wanted to do. Yeah, I totally agree. Nothing against the way anybody else was doing it. But that was the template that I kept seeing over and over and over again. And I said, I am probably the most stubborn, hard-headed person when it comes to if this is what everybody else is doing and I don't, I'm, I'm going to do something else. A little bit of a prick. That's yeah, nice. I like yeah. it. And now I'm like, I don't, I was like, I'm not going to do it the way everyone else does because no one's getting anywhere. All, all that does is helps the, the people involved, helps whoever's reviewing it and helps the brands mm-hmm. sell products. I was like, but the people, me, as I'm sitting there going to work every day, trying to find some energy to go to the fucking gym after 12 hours, you know, busting your ass all day long. It wasn't helping me. Mm-hmm. It was just helping take my money out of my wallet. But same time, there's enough information out there now where it's like, we have to do some work too. We can't sit there as consumers and pretend like we're totally lost. You have the entire internet. Yeah. So there's a there's a way to connect the dots that we wanted to fill. And, and that there. was, and like you said, what I just heard was the time. The time. You want to cut the time yes. out for people to be able to go to one spot to be able to review to to, to educate themselves and see actual reviews and something that you uh, you um, uh, kind of control to mm-hmm. make sure the bullshit stays out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what we did was so we decided no ads, no we don't take any money from supplement companies, um, and we wanted to add we wanted to make it a premium service. It was going to be a subscription. You'd have to pay for it. So we're like, okay, people are not going to be happy about that. They want information for free. Even if it's shitty information, they still want it for free. For sure. So we're like, we had a long talk, my business partner and I, about, okay, we're going to do this. And and I'm he kind of stays behind the scenes, but I was like, I'm going to take a lot of shit for this. I was like, but we believed in it strongly that the people, if you're going to improve some aspects of your life, especially when it comes to health and fitness, I think we can all agree you have to have skin in the game. Yes. You can't sit there like to try to be healthier and have some Google or Alexa sort of tell you the answer on how to or how to be happier. It's like, hey, Google, how, how can I be happy? Like you can't expect an answer. You have to get out there. Now, you need some guidance sometimes. You need some mentors, some friends, some people you can rely on. So we wanted to give that back. So that's where the idea for the Facebook community uh, kind of came into play with the app, um, which is – it's turned into something I never could have imagined. Like we wanted to get um, experts, whether it's someone like you, um, you know, whether they're bodybuilders, powerlifters, it doesn't matter. We wanted like industry professionals, personal trainers, so people could go in there. The way we compare the, the app is like an encyclopedia. It's like your textbook. It's like yep. taking a college class. Now the group is sort of like your classmates, your faculty, the people you can bounce ideas off of. It's like, okay, we know what Ashwagandha does. But now, how does it help me be a better or, 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 father to my kids, stuff like that? So, and everyone what, is it, what, what does it work well with? What doesn't it work well exactly. with? What have you known this with this or trying uh, to create a new product with it or anything like mm-hmm. it? Yeah. Well, and mm-hmm. as we all know too, supplements are 
there's not a lot of like studies. There's certainly no studies like combining 20 ingredients. <laughs> we're basically like one big experiment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Every single day. Because we're like, hey, man, did you try this? Did you mix it with this? How'd you feel? Good? All right. Let's cool make beans. Some. <laughs> let's, let's, well, yeah. It's funny you say that because I've always uh, laughed that like bodybuilders are the most intelligent morons <laughs> on the planet. <laughs> Yep. Because we are Amazing. highly intelligent yeah. of like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to eat yes. perfect with this, this amount of much yes. water, sodium. Mm -hmm. um, and then you mix in fucking steroids and then you're mixing in supplements. And you're like, bro, like you, yeah. you can't like be a moron. Some Heisenberg shit. Yeah. But then at the same time, you're like, hey, dude, that was really fucking stupid. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. but it worked. Yeah. But they worked. I'm still OK. So and that's the that's the the tough thing for me, because I'm not a scientist. Mm -hmm. I, I, I am halfway intelligent. I. Uh, uh, I'd say that I have a knack for this, mm -hmm. but I didn't go to school. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. Right. I don't mm -hmm. have that. I know that I run my own experiments on my body. Yes. I keep notes mm -hmm. on it. I see what happens, and I'm like, that was a good idea. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, though, whenever I did labs in college, like I was a molecular biology major for a while, and it's like whenever I did labs, it was fucking bro science. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine when somebody goes to run a study, all it is is like very – you're doing it by paid, highly intelligent professionals, and I'm like – well, in college, you're kind of doing that. So it, mm -hmm. it's, it is far off, but it's, it's the same concept mm -hmm. of running an experiment and keeping tabs on every little detail. Yep, yep. And if you do that, you'll learn about yourself. Yeah. And that's, in a sense... That's the process. That's the process yeah. of it. It's not, it's not a different process. Yeah. It's just more intricate details along the way. Yeah, and you know, there's a way to sort of... And what uh, Jacob and I have talked about this a lot recently. I said um, supplements and like health and fitness is kind of like three... Th we look at like three things when it comes to supplements. There is the science. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people can go out there and re-examine and then copy and paste it and put it on their Instagram. They can sound smart. And it's like, that's cool. But there's the science. And then there's your, your common sense. And then there's the experience part of it. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that really like comes into play that you – and I always know when someone's too far in one area, when I read somebody else's stuff. Because that, that experience factor, as we all know um, – it's not an excuse to say that supplements treat everyone differently. It, it is very subjective sometimes. And it's like, so now we start to talk about, we're like, okay, here's what the science tells us. I don't really think that applies to me. So we add some common sense and then now we try it. And then now we can talk to other people that are maybe in similar positions. And as we know, supplements used to be a, like a bodybuilding thing. It is not yeah. a bodybuilding thing no. at all the health uh the health the lifestyle uh, this, market, the lifestyle market yeah. everything like that is, it's so exciting and that's where we need to like get together in a group and that's why we put up the barrier of entry with the payment you have to subscribe to the app but i tell you what it is the best decision we ever made like well, i take shit for it but it is the best decision we ever made i will say that that's a, a similar thing to people whenever they get on us about discounts yes. about a company and discounts mm -hmm. about this it's like Whenever you're doing a job at your place of work, would you ever work a day for 35% off? Right. No. It's like personal trainers that give discounts. You're like, mm, mm, that's weird. That's a <laughs> lot. And, and usually whenever somebody's giving a discount, it's because they need sales. Yep. Yeah. Whenever you're running ads, they need the sales. Mm -hmm. That's a common And it builds that expected of, like, nature of people will wait to purchase until there's a discount again. Um, so, you know, it's like, why even do it in the first place? And it's difficult, but having something to pay for such as this, it's because your time and effort is worth money. Mm -hmm. It's worth value. And Mike went through the app with me earlier today, and I'm like, holy fuck. It's pretty crazy. It's a cool yeah. app. <laughs> yeah. It is It is a, an in-depth app, and um, it's cool because, like you said, like there is all the science, and that's great. Mm -hmm. Whenever you have science conversations, you need to understand the vocabulary and the terminology. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand it, you get fucking lost in yeah. the first paragraph. Yeah, You're useless. gone, yeah. and there's 20 paragraphs. Mm -hmm. So what the fuck, if you can't understand the verb verbiage in the first one, you're not going to understand the second one, third one, fourth one, yes. and so forth. Mm -hmm. So breaking it down in layman's terms is so important for people to be able to say, I get it. Because if you're just a dad and you're like, I would, or, or anybody just starting out, like, mm -hmm. I'd like to learn more. So whenever you have layman's terms, and then if you're very interested, you can go into scientific. Or if you're a dad or an older person that doesn't have time to research, you read the layman's terms, mm -hmm. and you're like, man, that makes sense. And you can go in and do further, uh, further understanding if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that, um, I mean... It's a it, it it connects with me because I've been a su I've loved supplements from fucking day one. Mm -hmm. I started lifting weights. I thought supplements were gonna make me at fucking everything. Oh, who I didn't? remember drinking. I remember going into GNC in Lower Borough. I was 16 years old, and my mom and dad would give me like 150 bucks, 
I'd be like, yeah, because I had to do the work around the house and all this mm-hmm. stuff and that. And uh, they'd be like, okay. And uh, I'd buy a box of Myoplex. Oh, Remember yeah. My- yeah. EAS Myoplex? Mm-hmm. The meal replacement packets? Mm-hmm. And I'd fucking drink like three or four of them a day. Yeah. Every day, because yeah. I thought like you had to drink them. Because yep. in the in the magazines, because we didn't have the internet back then, the magazines do drank. He'd be like, I had five of these a day, and this is how I got shredded. I'm like, yep. fuck yeah, me too. Dude, muscle <laughs> development. My dad would take me to Walmart. Like w- when we would go on Walmart trips, I bet Dad can we go to the magazine section. I was like 13, 14. Muscular development, flex, and muscle and fitness, and I just go through all the supplement ads. That's what I mean. It's like all oh, this masking or three thousand, whatever. Yeah. Russian bear. So, you know, <laughs> so I mean, I started out that way, and then I remember, man, I was probably younger than that. I was probably fourteen when I started doing that. Mm-hmm. And then, because after, whenever I was 15, I went to the gym for the first time, and I started drinking the pure protein canisters because mm-hmm. they were at the gym. Um, expensive as fuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was, back then, The I remember Rip Fuel was big. Mm-hmm. Um, Ultimate Orange was the pre-workout. Oh, yeah. yeah. That yeah, was nasty. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. People, like, had heart attacks from it. Yep. It was cool. Well, uh, yeah, my, <laughs> well, and mine was, and this kind of ties into what we tried to do now. I was like, man, I wish I would have had me then. So... I'm a kid. I skipped out on college. I went back later on, but I just wanted a place of my own. So I'm, I'm living on my own. I'm like 18 and, and I'm working out and stuff like that. And my first like delve into supplements was the original Celtech. Yeah. With the lab coats and all this other yeah. stuff. And I mean, I'm spending Bro, all my money. 75 I'm grams of like, sugar. I'm making like pounds. $7 an hour, you know, <laughs> and, and I'm going and buying Celtech. And I look back and it is creatine and dextrose. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Bro, they like, made so much bitch. money on that product. I remember yeah. it being so expensive, but I'm like, like looking back now, knowing uh, cost of all of, of everything, I'm like, oh my god, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my god, there was yeah. like a thousand percent markup. That was yep. painful. <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah. So. But um, so e- even going back as far as that, I remember all of that uh, and being with other supplement companies and and some of the products being mediocre or subpar mm-hmm. or uh, not saying what's in the product and all that stuff. And now being in this position, opening an and, axe and sledge, I was like, it's going to be done my way. It's going to be done with high quality ingredients. And the one thing that I learned working with Pat was I knew ingredients. I knew supplements. I knew what I wanted to feel from a layman's terms perspective. But I didn't understand uh, 100% about the science part of it or the formulations. Mm-hmm. Like the f- formulating a product is very difficult to do. And you can take these five ingredients mm-hmm. at their uh, uh, medically studied dosages mm-hmm. and put them all into a fucking product. Mm-hmm. You're like, yep, they're all at full dose of that medical study, and it's going to be great, and you guys check them all out. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, that's all. that sounds like a good idea, mm-hmm. but in reality, using common sense, if you formulate something with all those full dosages, you might have some issues. Mm-hmm. You can't just... Education. Yeah, it occurs. And yeah, that you know. and that's a very common thing to happen in the industry because if you see something, and this is all whenever people are looking in, um, like uh, like they look at the formulation of something, they're like, oh, well, that's underdosed. I'm not going to take it because it's underdosed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's well, underdosed because if it's at full dose and with all these other uh, yeah. ingredients – you're going to get fucked up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and the, most of the people saying underdose are just regurgitating what they've yes. like heard what somebody they, but, say as, a, as an adequate dose. You know? But taking something from theory yeah. into no, practicality is mm-hmm. two different things. Because I remember yeah. whenever we were doing ignition switch. Yeah. Whenever we were doing ignition switch having uh, uh, dynamine and teocrine together. Mm-hmm. Oh, you full dose both of those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. You're going to be make, all. Yeah, your form- head will fucking yeah. throb. Yeah. We and formulated a product with both and it was, it, it was hard it, to flavor. You can do. Yeah. You can do it. But it has to be formulated correctly. And guess mm-hmm. what? People are like, oh, it's underdosed. And it's yeah. like, hey, dickheads. Yeah. It's like saying, oh, well, if I one, take... the one study? Like, base, Are we basing the dosage off of that? See, the, like, and that's... And that, and, but the thing is, it's one <laughs> yeah. study. And, there's, right, uh, right. And, and that's that thing where you just said, there's the science, there's right. common sense, and then there's practicality. Exactly, yeah. And you have to... Those, those, that, those three things play such an important role in it. But um, I... Uh, I can't remember who said this to me. They were like, well, it's like going out to the bar. And I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> and they're like, if you know that three uh, tequila shots are going to ta- rip you up, mm-hmm. and you know two Jaeger shots do the same thing that those tequila shots do, and then you know you can drink some bourbon. You can have four or five of them before you start feeling it. 
let's put them all together in one night and see yeah. what happens. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you're going to have a hell of a night, kind of like having a hell of a product. Yeah, right. I'm like, but that's not a good idea mm -hmm. yeah. because over time doing that over and over and over again, you're mm -hmm. going to have some problems. Yep. And that's where uh, me personally, why I got away from stimulants, a yep. lot of stimulants was adrenal fatigue. Mm -hmm. uh, I just taxed, taxed to the mm -hmm. fucking gills before yeah, during preps. And that's why I'm a big non-stim pre-workout guy. Mm -hmm. That's um, what got us in the door with us all uh, fuel pump at the time, hydraulic, yeah, right? Hydraulic yeah, hydraulic now, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah uh, I'm impressed with that formula. Well, you know? again, whenever you're formulating products, it's something that you sit down. Bro, from a research and development perspective, um, it's easy to just put everything together. But then you – like the practicality of it is calling a manufacturer and then changing your formula like five or six times mm – -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, that's a bitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's time, money, effort, and you're going to start pissing your manufacturer off. Yeah. But at the same time, it's something that you're investing into. Exactly. And we did it with ignition switch. We did it with hydro hydraulic. Was uh, I knew what I wanted, and Pat and I sat down and went through it all. And when we created it, I was like, this is a product, dude. Mm -hmm. I love the feeling. It feels like you took a pre-workout, but you're not stimmed out Without of your mind. It feels yeah. like it. And I'm like, I can take this because at the time I was training at 8 or, eight or 9 o'clock at night. I'm like, yeah, I can go to sleep after it. It's great. And then the price came into play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. like, fuck me, dude. Yeah, yeah like, this it's all a big balance. The mm -hmm. big balancing act. Yeah. And, it, and it's tough, but um, I think uh, that's why learning what you do is, is so important for the mm -hmm. community. And that was a big thing for me creating the company. I was like, I want people to be able to have good products. Mm -hmm. Because if you were me, bro, going to the gym was the only thing you like to do. That's all I like to do. Yeah. It was my escape. And I wanted to take good products and not shit and not feel like dog dick or have cool flavors and all that come into play. And I can't be the only one that thinks like that. There had to be more out there. And since we've created Axe and Sledge, there's been other companies that have a similar uh, concept that we do. And I'm like, fuck yeah, here it mm -hmm. comes. It's good for the people. It's I great. think one thing you said was is what I think about all the time is – you think about people because I was I was that person still, you know, kind of am that person is most people, you know, that we in the industry can make it so small and so about certain things. But most people that you're trying to to reach and help, they're just they're it, they're fighting for survival every single day that that what you said about that was exactly me going to the gym was the one sense of accomplishment that I would feel in my day for a long time because, I, you know, I was. I was working, I was doing what I was supposed to do at, at work, I was providing, but there, I hadn't got to that point where I realized, okay, there's more out there for me. I didn't break that cycle yet. So like going to the gym was, was everything for me. Like that was the high point of the day. And it's like, there's so many people that they need that. And then they go out there, they're following ads, they're following and they're spending their money that they just worked, you know, for, and they're not getting the benefits out of it. And it's just this, as I look at the industry, it's getting better, I think, but it's, um, it's a constant cycle of the same thing. It's just people, here's the next thing. Here's the next thing. This is the one. This is the one. And I'm kind of like famous for saying there's no best, right? Because people are always like, what's the best pre-workout? What's the best? For I'm like, I don't know. I said, mm -hmm. we need to have a conversation about what it is you're trying to fix. What is stopping you? Like when people say, what's the best fat burner? It's like, well, <laughs> what, what about your lifestyle is stopping you from being in that caloric deficit, you know, adhering to that? Then we can start talking about what ingredients do what. Whereas, you know, before it was like, we're just going to give you a shit ton of stimulants. It's going to crush your appetite. You're cracked out of your mind and <laughs> then you don't eat. You're sick too. It's going to be great. You're going to throw yeah. up and then there, there's your weight loss kind of thing. And people are just anymore. They know that that's not, you know, there's, I think there's this odd balance in the supplement space where some people tr blindly trust the industry. And then there's it, so many people that are just very distrustful and part of my thing, like when I originally looked at that whey protein tub, I'm like, man, is this stuff like toxic? Like, is this bad for me? But it actually wasn't. Mm -mm. So there's a lot of things that sound intimidating. You look at these chemical names and you're like, Fuck. is this like, is this, this I, dangerous? Yep. But it's actually not in a lot of ways sometimes, but uh, most stuff is. And, and what you just explained and that whole process is why people, I mean, you have, are in a very small niche right now with this mm -hmm. and it's growing, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. But you are on that in the forefront of owning a fucking store. Right. right. That's why because, he and I align so well. Mm -hmm. You know, the, it's the same concept, man. That's you what know? I was going to say, like coming into it and you're like, um, you're like people walk through the door and want what you just said. Mm -hmm. They want to blindly trust you. Yep. And then they have one bad experience at another fucking store, and they're like, "Fuck stores." Oh yeah, fuck well, there's you. a large there's a large chain of stores that kind of rubs people the wrong way, 
And that's kind of what I got started in, you know, going in and uh, 16, buying uh, – Promacil was the first protein I ever got. Right when what Rivalis Right when Rivalis started. Oh, um, yeah, okay. Right when the whole split from ON and all that. Yeah, um, yeah. Promacil – and, you know, I remember being upsold. Every time I would go in this store, upsold, here's – join our membership. Buy this. You need this. You yeah. Know, you 16-year-old who's trying to gain muscle, you need a fat burner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I had the opportunity through college to work for a small store and their whole, like – philosophy was educate first Mm -hmm. sell later Mm -hmm. right and so i took those concepts learned everything i could about ingredients and i was like i want to develop a store concept that is a consultation environment so instead of somebody coming in and saying where's the fat burners we're not going to even tell you we're going to ask you a question a series of questions that leads you to the right product for you very similar to how the app works and i think that's kind of how we align so well with our views on how people should be sure. know, educated. And that's not easy. Because no, it's not hard only to scale. do you have to be smart, <laughs> not well, only do you have to be smart and knowledgeable mm-hmm. of all your products, mm-hmm. you also have to be, be a people person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You there's can't not call much people. money. There's not a lot of money in education either. No. <laughs> no. no. Well, not on the front end. Not on the front end. On the front end. You know, because, yeah. Exactly. The uh, long term value of a supplement customer is yeah. astounding. Well, that's, so if you can. Well, that's what I was going to say that's so mm-hmm. unique about you too is is the, the pioneering of what you're doing. Right. There are stores out there that do what you do, mm-hmm. but they are few and far between. Right. I know. Uh, They're hard to scale. They are very difficult you, to scale. How do you take from one to 20 the experience that you provide each individual? And, and the people that you hire. Mm-hmm. And whenever you hire people, yep. it, you can't hire morons. Yeah. If you're educating, you're not allowed to hire morons. Yeah. And I don't mean that in any derogatory yeah. way to anybody, but Sometimes people are morons yeah. or lazy right. because they don't want to learn about a product. Well, they have arrogant. To all... That's one thing. I, a lot of guys uh, have applied with thing. us that have nutrition degrees and, you know, et cetera. You're not the guy I want. Like, our guys at the store, we've built them, you know, and we've, we've curated them. But yeah. a lot of arrogance, you know, like with kids, especially the degree people. Yeah. The exercise science, and that's my degree. I'm like, you don't know anything. You're, <laughs> trust me, you're not. I have the same degree yeah. from the same school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it but yeah, sucks. I agree. Don't worry. I agree, I agree man. <laughs> it's yeah. but um, no, that's something that uh, because it goes back to what you said about the science, mm-hmm. and then um, the science, the formulations, and or the science, the and what was it? Common sense. Common sense, yeah, and then practicality. And then mm-hmm. yeah. Because it's like if you're not, if you haven't taken the product. Yeah. You can't really give your your own input about it. Yep. And that's something for a lot of people that are in sales want to tell people, yeah, it's great. Take mm-hmm. it, buy it. Whereas, yeah. like, it's sometimes you gain more validity or more uh, more reassurance from people when you say, I haven't taken it, mm-hmm. but I've had three people who come in yep. and they love this product. Exactly. It's something just being open and transparent with people about mm-hmm. it because um, – And people appreciate that. You know, mm-hmm. like, they'll ask – they'll come in the store and we'll, we'll carry – we might carry, let's say a brand has – eight SKUs, right? Mm-hmm. Or eight different products. Well, we might only carry five of them. They're like, well, where's the other? And I'll, you know, we're up front with them. Hey, we're not really a huge fan of that formula. Here's why. Um, but we love the rest of their products. You yeah. know, here's why. Um, I but, think that honesty, you and, know. And, and it's okay because, and that's like I said, like, bro, there are thousands of supplement companies. <laughs> oh, yeah. For, to, for my products to be on shelves at people's stores, thousands of stores throughout the country, and yeah. people make money off of them, that's business. That's a great business working relationship. But the fact is, it's like, I know that there's people who are going to be like, fuck yeah, Seventh Gear is the best stimulant pre-workout on the market. Mm-hmm. And then there's going to be somebody that like, I took it and I didn't like it. Yeah. But it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. I want to make sure that your experience in the gym fucks. Mm-hmm. Like That's my goal in yeah. life. Whenever we create a product, I know that not everybody is going to love it. Mm-hmm. Let's understand, we can't please everybody, no, no. but I'm going to make it the best that I believe it could be. Mm-hmm. And it's and it, obviously right, right now for us, it's working. But at the same time, if you don't like seventh gear, that's fine. If it is a great, it is a mm-hmm. great product. You might like hydraulic better, mm-hmm. or you'd be like, "Well, I'm just not a stim guy." Yeah. Or you could be like, "Listen, I don't like their pre workouts, but their protein, yeah. it's the shit." Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. For the record, everybody, uh, TNS does carry every single skew for access. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 we'll yeah. give but the plugs in a second. <laughs> uh, you, know, your yeah, store yeah, down no, there? Not, no, not, no, I'm not. Yeah, no, I'm but, fucking um, with you. But no, I was gonna say I gotta give props to you guys because what you've built as far as the culture behind Axe and Sledge has actually put a little bit of a damper on our process at the store and how we like talk to customers because they will come in and they will beeline straight for seventh gear, straight for demo day, mm. uh, which is not a bad thing. I just have to give props to you guys for well, developing that like following. Well, uh, of course, our people are wonderful. And like you said, uh, return return on a customer is important because mm-hmm. the experience is everything for someone. Right, right. We want. Well, I want the gym experience for people to fuck. Of course. If you go to the gym, <laughs> more than likely, two days out of the – say you go to the gym or work out five days a week, at least two of those days you're going to be like, fuck this. Mm-hmm. 
I just, I had a hell of a day at work and right now it's, I, I do not feel like doing this. But then they, they still stick in there and they have the experience they needed was pulling the pre-workout and then feeling it in the middle of the workout or, or, or taking, taking demo day and actually getting the extra jolt. They start filling up again. They're feeling it. Yeah. That's what I remember on my days because I was going to the gym no matter what. On a bad day, yes, I'm going to the gym. Good day, going to the gym. Right. No matter what, what it was, mm -hmm. on the days that I felt weak and like, oh, man, I got to do chest and I'm a bitch. I didn't drink enough water today. This is going to be a fucking bad workout. I'm just fuck. Mm -hmm. and, I take the, and I took my pre-workout or whatever it was, and I was like, yeah, I'm yeah, glad I stayed here. <laughs> yep. That's for the experience that we wanted to create. And, um, and I think that the more companies that do, it, do that and have that in their head, the more successful they'll become. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy. Yeah. Fuck. Well, there's a, the trickle-down effect. And when I've said from the beginning, long before I ever met Jacob, I was like, retailers, I loved the retail setting. Because, well, you know, you mentioned GNC before. Back then, dude, going to GNC was like a social gathering. Like, it was awesome. Everybody was there. You were talking about products. You know, the people behind there. It was a totally different, you know, atmosphere than it sort of, like, eventually turned into. But I always loved the retail setting because that was the one place, you know, before social media started booming stuff. That's where you could go and talk to people about mm -hmm. this stuff. And you could talk not just necessarily because I always make – every day I think I make a parallel – with something to the gym where, you know, the just getting to the gym is not necessarily about, you know, building bigger muscles all the time. It's like, it teaches you discipline. It teaches you, you know, sticking to a plan. It can help, you know, deal with stress. So, so if you sell hydraulic to a customer who has, you know, maybe something kind of going on in their heads and um, then they start to work out, they gain more confidence, they're, they're dealing with stress better. All of a sudden they start something cool out there because they have like this extra time and extra energy. So you're taking that, you know that when you're making your products. So the trickle down effect of what you did to give someone a product and then help educate them at the same time. I mean, that's, I think that's what it's all about. Like the responsibility that, you know, like taking care of your employees, you were talking a lot about that as the content will show with some amazing stuff that you guys talk about taking care of the people that work for you so they can take care of people. It's the same thing when you're making products that go in people's bodies, this is for their health they can then take that and pass it down to other people. And it's like, that's what it's all about for me. Yes. No. A absolutely. And in, in, in the beginning, and you know, you're young, which we'll get into in a second. <laughs> um, in the beginning, the amount of fuck-ups that happen yeah. that are expensive and time-consuming is like, but it's, you're, it's worth that. Yeah. Because I know, like you, you were saying earlier, both you were like, there's the light at the end of the tunnel is if I put in all this work and I believe in myself, I will make – good money from what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and it will occur because I feel like we're breaking into that right now, even yeah. though we're 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 we see hurdles constantly. Mm -hmm. But it's like, yeah, I'm fuck that hurdle. I'm jumping mm -hmm. that bitch. I'm gonna make it I'm either going through it or over it. It's yeah. gonna happen. It takes a certain level of like of faith in what you're doing. That Absolutely. It, you know, it's gonna return. Like um I make the parallel to all the videos that we make on the store page. Like when I first started it was my parent well not my parents. A lot of people be like, what are you you're wasting your time making these stupid videos? You know, why, why are you wasting your time? This, that, that's not going to make sales. Well, fast forward now, you know, we make videos every day and yeah. people actually gain value from them. Yes. And it, but it's th been three years of just constantly getting nothing back in return from that. Well, that's so. the part about being young. You own, so uh, Jacob Davis, you own the nutrition store. That's correct. TNS. Yeah. I've made it very, very simple in naming. I was like, you can't <laughs> miss it. You're going to the nutrition store. Which one? The nutrition the store, new. right? So. Uh, that's yeah. some that's so, some serious knowledge to have at I, your age. You're 25 years old. Yes, sir. You've yeah. owned it for three years now. So 22 years old. You were the fucking moron in town for starting your own supplement store. <laughs> yeah. Nice, good job. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. I say I was saying earlier, like just a minute ago, you're young. Uh -huh. I, I was talking to Justin yesterday. Uh, I was like, man, I was like, I, I'd have thought you'd been like 28, 29. Yeah. Still young and handsome. You're excited, but 25. I was like, you're still gonna fuck up huge one oh, day. Of course, it's gonna I'm, be great. Yeah, I embrace it. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, but yeah. but I, I got a kick out of it because I'm like, man, when I was 25, I had just turned pro and I thought I was fucking it. And I'm like, I fast forward, I'm like, man, I fucked up like three really big times. Right. Like right. life changing. Like yeah. holy fuck, I'm gonna lose everything. Mm -hmm. Did lose everything, and I'm like, huh, I can't give up. I just got to keep going. Yeah. So I, I, I laughed at that about mm -hmm. him because it's great to have somebody that is so uh, clear-headed about knowing these things and, mm -hmm. you know, talking about uh, just entrepreneurship and yeah. Andy and uh, other people that you listen right. to. Yeah. Those are things that, like, you're ready for them. Right. Well, I think they, like, that helped fast-track me into maturity of whatever you want to call it, like listening to yourself, Andy, uh, Milet, uh, a lot of the influences when I was 21, 22, like finishing up college, like – 
it kind of opened up my eyes instead of going through the typical nine to five route. I was like, I can, I can do that. And so I think that helped fast track me. I would say you know? that it, it goes a lot back to the bullshit about Gary V. Like you either yeah. love that motherfucker or you yeah. hate him. And there's days yeah. I love him and there's days I hate yeah, same. him. Same. But when you're 22 years old, mm-hmm. there's no better time to fuck up than that. Oh, of course. Mm-hmm. Like, cause you're like, I'm already yeah. broken. I'm, right? I can yeah. like live in my parents' basement for I a while. I love him when he so says cool. the motivational shit. And then when he says, don't buy a fucking nice car because yeah. you don't want to impress anybody. I'm like, no, I want, I want, I want to do that. Well, you well, know? Like, I think like, yeah. you need to be able yeah. to, uh, you, you need to be able to have these aspirations that right. are great and of course. grand and things that you dream about because mm-hmm. I believe me without having a vision or a dream of something just for yourself personally of course the grind will eat you mm-hmm. you that light at the end of the tunnel like I always joke like financial freedom is a big thing for me but I'm like what do I what what is it though yeah right because I'm I don't know anything about yeah. cars I love cars right. I have one it's yeah. great I like trucks better but mm-hmm. I look at them like Sitting there with Hannah on a yes. beach somewhere, mm-hmm. just relaxing and enjoying each other's company. Right. Mm-hmm. I can't get to that fucking beach unless I have money. Mm-hmm. Because when I retire, if mm-hmm. I retire and I'm still worrying about money, fuck my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's like, th- that for me is that. But um, That's a vessel. Uh, a vessel to freedom, basically. Yes. That's what money so, is, right? But all that time, all that time, it's uh, like right now, it's no better time to work and fuck up. Mm-hmm. So whatever Gary Vee's like, he's like, yeah, you're 25 years old. Take yeah. a chance on yourself. Of course. Right? Invest yeah. all the money that you have because if it works and everything that you work for actually works out, bro, you're in it. You're yeah. And if it doesn't work out, you're yeah. not going to give up. Yeah. You're going to keep going. I still got opportunities, else. you know? Yeah. Like, there's there's no shortage of opportunity. And what's, and, and, yeah. and what's somebody going to say to you? You're a fucking moron? Yes, I understand. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. For trying, yeah. yeah. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. well, and I think that's one thing that I've always complimented Jacob on is – when you're uh, when you're working a typical you know your normal job it's like you know you go in someone has a plan for you and you know it's not that you don't work hard but you don't really find out anything about yourself mm-hmm. you have to kind of do it in your free time which usually you know you're tired you know you're exhausted you, you just don't have that that time and people you know the it, the greatest currency is not money it's time and then like you know hearing Jacob's story and you know when we first met uh, to be willing to go after that but then also you know he learns about himself every single day stuff like putting into his he's investing in himself every single day where some people and it's also never too late i waited but it was the right time for me like i didn't have the balls to do what he did you know back then i didn't have the confidence in myself no i the desire like in my head it was always there but <clears throat> i was way too scared i didn't have anybody to sort of like show me that this was possible i didn't think that that was a viable option for me or mm-hmm. even somebody just say yeah do it yeah, yeah. how many nobody nobody nobody's, yeah, nobody. nobody's like yeah dude go mm-hmm. ahead Spend all your money yeah. and fuck your life. Up. Well, that's I learned really quick not to tell people what I was doing because especially <laughs> yeah. people from my hometown. Yeah, because they would you know, I, told, you the I, I would tell a few people that yeah. I considered close, and I was like, "Hey, I really want to do this, and we're, this is why we're going to be different because it's going to be an entire experience." Oh, okay, cool, yeah, awesome. You know, like when you going to get a real job? You know, like <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's a, but it's a cool you know it's a cool like thing to look back on too though you know and, and see like all like the process and that and it's. Uh, like I, I list, I was listening to something from Andy a couple of days ago, and it was mm-hmm. it was awesome. And it's that thing where being young and taking a chance and understanding that you're going to go through trials and tribulations. And I'm like, man, I was like, I can't wait to ex- get further experience into what I'm doing to be able to have the same experience he does because mm-hmm. I believe in your 20s you fuck up. Of course, I think in your 20s you go for it, mm-hmm. go for it. Yep. And all you're doing is learning. And, and whenever I equate learning, my rudimentary thought is, fuck up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're going to take a chance. Mm-hmm. Hey, shouldn't do that. Right. Hey, good idea. That was awesome. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then in your 30s, you are now applying all the fuck ups. Mm-hmm. In your 30s, you're applying all of the things that you that you learned. Right. So you're like, hey, that was a really bad idea. I'm not going to do it, so I'm going to grind the fuck out of it this way. Mm-hmm. So I'm in my 30s. In your 40s, you make the money. That's yep. how I look at it. Because in your 40s, you are sure of yourself. Mm-hmm. You've had the... <laughs> the the decade of fuck ups mm-hmm. you've had the decade of fucking application mm-hmm. and now you have the decade of fucking head down i am fucking you up mm-hmm. yeah i'm in it i know what works what doesn't work i know people i know everything about this skilled trade that i'm in whatever it may be mm-hmm. 40s you make money yep and that's how i look at it because whenever i see somebody in their 40s that is relatively successful such as pat like pat's direction he's the he's one of the owners here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um 
whenever he's speaking on on something that he is incredibly sure of, I'm like, bro, you are mm -hmm. fucking there is right. no, and now working with him for three and a half years, I'm yeah. like, bitch, you've been right. Oh man, just talking with <laughs> him last night. You've been fucking yeah. right yeah. almost every single time you've said something. Mm -hmm. Even going back to whenever we first started the company, when we first started the company, he was 43 years old. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bitch, this is like, so whenever you get into a discussion or argument or question anything, he's like, no, it's going to go this way. And I'm like, really? You're that confident yeah. in yourself, huh? Yeah. But it, was, it wasn't just himself. It was the thought process and yeah. putting the people in place mm -hmm. and seeing and forecasting. Being able to forecast is something you can't do in your fucking 20s. <laughs> you can't forecast in your 20s because you're yeah. like, fuck it. Yeah. Well, you don't yeah. have a back cast. You know, like you don't have to. You, can't, you, don't, you don't have anything to look back <laughs> That's on. That's what I mean. Yeah. So whenever I yeah. see somebody in their 40s and it's like they're very sure of themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. They know what's going to occur. And they're mm -hmm. like, yes, I know people and I know relationships mm -hmm. and I know how this is going to work. Mm -hmm. And I am confident in myself and everything mm -hmm. I've learned through decades of life right that's how it's going to happen mm -hmm. yeah. so and i think to oh, sorry to cut you no, off no no i was going to uh, say so that's why i think like i can't i can't i'm so uh excited to continue to experience everything and meet people such mm -hmm. as yourselves and, and just understand right. and absorb as much as i can at this point because there's going to be times whenever i'm in pat's position and i understand it when you went through this too even as far along as you were when you guys started accents legend this is something i know that jacob the same thing is when you start your business, whatever it may be, you everyone wants to give you an opinion. Oh and, uh, yeah. yeah, and it's usually not people. You know, people that have that have had businesses. You, they'll be like, if you if you need anything, come ask me. Right. Yeah. You can pay it for. Well, those but are the ones you want to listen to. But right, but you yeah. don't necessarily like run around. Like I'm not going to run around and tell Jacob what to do. He's like right. he's fine. Yeah. But the people that have no fucking idea what you're talking about, but have always had this, like you know maybe. Oh, I, I want. I, I could do this. And I could, Idea. They're the ones that are going to tell you. Oh, you should do it this way. And if you're not 100% supremely confident in mm -hmm. what you're doing, next thing you know, right, you're off track. You're going side, and you have to be, especially when you're first getting going. The, we, yeah. we talk about the runway analogy a lot. It's like you know, you're going to run out of runway, and you're going sideways. It's like so. Mm -hmm. It's uh, that's one good thing about too Jacob, where he's like, I believe in my vision so strongly that I don't give a fuck. What you guys think? Oh yeah, yeah. supplement so, store owners are terrible about it too. And like, they come out of the woodworks, man. <laughs> yes, they and, do. And again, what, and whenever we started this, which was unique, was the way you're pioneering what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like you, you are to. You have to be pretty confident in yourself to do what you're doing because there are other people that, like you said in the beginning, like they have their ideas and there's a model that's being followed. Because yes. bro, you can make twenty, thirty grand a month pretty easily mm -hmm. by reviewing supplements. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you're like, fuck yeah, we got a good business mm -hmm. here. We're making money, it's mm -hmm. nice, I like <laughs> it, I like it. But having the the long-term value yeah. in yourself and your thoughts and your dreams mm -hmm. is a big thing. And whenever it comes to with what you're doing, right. same thing, education, mm -hmm. education. Yeah. But it's hard to educate people yeah. because you, <laughs> yeah. you, you got to build a relationship with them. Yeah. Educating people is uh, like me making YouTube videos whenever I started. I was like, yeah. I am I'm not a scientist. I'm not a fucking chiropractor like my brother. I don't know the human body so precisely like him. But I know how to do this bicep curl when mm -hmm. it's done for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know well, how to train legs. That's why relate so well to you. But mm -hmm. that, and that's what I mean. But then mm -hmm. I, I look and I'm like, man, there's a lot of people out there that are way smarter. But I'm like, I'm just going to make it as hard as fucking possible. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure it's working. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly why it's working. But what, hap what I've done is, is you don't have to be a rocket scientist to have success. Nope. Mm -hmm. There's more than one way to skin a cat, and there's more than one way to run a supplement company yep. and a supplement store. Yeah. There's more than one way, and that's where it's unique for you. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna do it my way. It's gonna exactly. be new. And and that and that for me, you know, figuring out what what really makes you happy. The the one thing above everything is for me to have that freedom of I don't need anything from anybody else. Like if I can lay my head down at night and I'm happy with where I'm at, I don't care if what size the house is or how many cars. It's that feeling in your head. And that's where I'm at right now. And that's why, like, when I hear, whether it's criticism or you tell people tell you to do something else, I'm like, I don't really give a fuck. Like, you have no idea how happy I am so like, I was every day say, in my life. <laughs> I would probably say that uh, we mentioned it yesterday whenever you and I were talking, but that means that something occurred in your life yes. where you're like, bro, I'm going to do it my way because I want personal happiness. Mm -hmm. So, And that's something that in life that you may have not experienced yet. I'm still in the phase that wants yeah. to own the world. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I identify that, though. Like, And I see the phases of like youth, and like I'm like, yeah, I want to make a lot of money. I want to have a lot of impact. Yeah. But I do yeah. know that the other phases are coming. And, so. and like for, for someone to think like that, people ask your, the same thing. They're like, man, you are always seem kind of positive. You're always up, mm -hmm. and you're always feeling good, and you're mm -hmm. happy. And yeah. people say the same thing to me. I'm like, so I ate a shit sandwich for years. 
this <laughs> morning. And I had to, but I, but I smiled about it. Yeah. But, and those are the things that you have that, that why I think people um, like uh, to have these to just continue to become a new person every day and build yourself and become mm-hmm. better. You have to go through some ugly shit. Mm-hmm. And to be able to feel and think the way you do, you mm-hmm. have to be like that right there. I remember when I was trying to please mm-hmm. a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I remember whenever mm-hmm. I was just trying to do the right thing all the time and yep. be the best person ever and not really be myself. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think most people go through that. And that yeah, was absolutely. like, I, we started ta- having that conversation yesterday. I was like, shit, we could be here for about 12 hours because, and that's why, I very rarely like listen to like other people. I just kind of focus on what we do. I'm so hyper focused on because it's a lot of work. Like I say, we're kind of pioneering something. You don't have time to sort of like look around too much, but Mm -mm. you can recognize a language in other people. And this is not a good or bad and it's not an age thing. It can happen at any point in your life, but there's some things that you say that I just kind of smile because I'm like, if you've been there, you recognize it in someone else. And I, I made this analogy before I was having a conversation with someone. I'll try to keep it short because I'm very passionate about this. But the world we're kind of living in now, you have – it's like everybody's out in the ocean and they're, like, drowning. You know, people are trying to keep their heads above water, most everyone, right? Yeah. And you have all these outside factors. People are throwing weights at everyone, basically. Like, some people catch them and they sink and they're drowning and they're clawing and they're trying to pull other people down with them. They're, they're trying to do the best they can to survive. So some stuff kind of happens in your life. I remember I tried to commit suicide when I was a teenager and I had no idea why. Like I have like great parents, but I was totally lost. And I think most people never find their way out of the woods, right? They never can sort of get over that. They're just constantly feeling lost. They, they know there's something else out there. So I, 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 Take it as like the sink or swim analogy, but you're sitting there clawing, trying to get your way out of this water, right? And then you do, um, whether it's an event that happens or whether it's just slowly over time, you pull yourself up and you see this like a new view of the world, right? You don't see the water rushing in over top of you. You see the air is different and you're just like, fuck, like this can be like this. So the first thing you think of is what about this person next to me that's, they're so close, to, to getting above water. They want it so bad, like, let me reach out my hand. Let me reach out my other hand. How about my other foot? Next thing you know, you help four people do the same thing. And then they help four people. And when you talk about the giving back, and because you've, you've been there and you know other people are there, that is what gets me going every day. I mean, it's, a, it's crazy you said that because the weight's pulling you, you down. It's pulling you under the water like, uh, just the thought of drowning, like even mm-hmm. just taking the analogy into practicality and saying, that's where I'm at. I'm underwater right now. And you're like, fuck, I'm starting to drown. Like you feel like shit. You feel weighted. People are pulling you down, saying mm-hmm. mean things to you. And then there's parts of yourself that are just pulling you down. Yep. All of a sudden it feels like that you cut the weight off mm-hmm. and like you come up and you're like, holy fuck, <laughs> where was I? It's, it's so crazy. much easier this way. Oh my God. Yeah. Just it's and almost in that said in a sense, not giving a fuck. You know what I mean? Like you have a, a I don't give a fuck attitude, but it's not that because mm-hmm. I don't really care what people think of me, but I do. But you it's, care very deeply about certain things. That's what I was just going to yeah. say. But but I do because I care about you. Mm-hmm. I care about my employees. I care about good people. Mm-hmm. I care. My, I guess I just said it. Good people. Mm-hmm. And I care about those things. So that's whenever you lend the arm out. That's when you start mm-hmm. talking and being open and being transparent. Um, and. No, it makes a lot of sense. And you do recognize that in other people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's you recognize when, because a lot of people run around and they say they hate their lives, they hate their jobs, and it's a common kind of thing. But you'll hear it in, in certain people that, yes, they're in that position, but they want, they want, they just don't know. And that sort of like gets into our whole concept with the app and then our consulting program, the things we do with helping build businesses. I don't ever want to see someone that's like one step away from that life-changing move to not get there just because they don't know. You know what I mean? Because they want it so bad. But sometimes, you know, the, there's a lot of information that's, that's hard to find or you don't know what you don't know. And you just also, you just said it right there too, though. You got it. You're, you're that without saying it, educating people, Mm -hmm. but you want to help them. But at the same time, you got to let them learn. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're like, cause you're, uh, we didn't even mention this. You do consult for other companies on help, how to help build a brand. Correct. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're doing that, you're like, Hey, this is what you should do. But I'm yes. just a consultant. Yes. 
I'm just telling you this is what you should do, and mm -hmm. then that goes to them buying into what you're saying or them investing into these ways because they hired you as a consultant, and mm -hmm. but they still have to learn. Mm -hmm. Well, and one example would be like we could use Jacob as an example. Like, I, if if a brand comes to us, and we don't just do supplement companies, but it's usually where we focus. Mm -hmm. um, if a brand says, you know, I need to get into retail, I could be like, Jacob's my boy. He'll pick them up, right? Yeah. But that doesn't help anybody. So instead, if a brand wanted to get in Jacob's store, we would give them the tools to approach Jacob in the proper way so they can take that lesson with them. I'm not going to just... better be sharp. And, well, I, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, first of all, uh, let me uh, sit yeah. down. Yeah. But, to, but to break in, yeah. I, again, I did not understand retail stores until starting this company because right. I'm super passionate. Mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to be on big sales calls. Yeah. Seth's not on there. Mm -mm. Why? Well, here's the thing. Because I'm emotional. And right. I'll tell you, go yeah, fuck yeah. yourself because my shit's awesome. Yeah. And we did get, we, they told us that. Yeah, that was <laughs> a good thing. Well, also, like, the, the and that, that kind of goes into how I, like, run the operation, too, because – we're not like most supplement stores that bring things in based off, okay, what are you willing to give me? What kind of margin can you offer me? What kind of discount, you know, all the wholesale, whatever. Um, it's more so, hey, how are the formulas? What kind of brand recognition do you have? Um, and how can we work together, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I piss off a lot of brands. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's okay. Lot, Cause you're young. You're allowed, to, you're allowed to piss people off. <laughs> oh, I love it's that. great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. 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 Cause it, you know, honest in sales, what I've learned is, is if you're not a little bit of a jerk off, yeah. you won't get along with sales guys. Right. You got to mm -hmm. be a little bit of like mm -hmm. our sales team. They're complete jerk offs, but yeah. they're hard workers. They're sure of themselves. They sell a great product and they're good people themselves. Mm -hmm. So watching them, it's like you need to have a, be yep. able to have discussions. Yep. Mm -hmm. And be able to talk through things. You can't just be a closed-minded prick like I was in the beginning. I'm like, I have the best. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm like, but then what's the best? <laughs> I'm like, what's the mm -hmm. it, it's it's a tough thing to mm -hmm. to yeah. manage. And in sales, yeah, there's, that's why building a brand and and company yeah. is difficult because there's so many different aspects of it. Right. Um. And the, the growth process of being able to do things financially. Right. Yeah. Because well, you'd love to bring in everybody, but you can't. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we did also notice too that. You know, we didn't really set out to do the consulting. My my business partner, you and him would have a, it would be an amazing podcast. He's a fucking savage. But it's a pretty good one. He's young and just he's just a different breed kind of thing. But we're we're like brothers now. We we ha we complement each other really well. But like, you know, he kind of went through the same thing. Brands started coming to us asking for help, and we didn't realize really kind of what was going on. Like I said a couple years ago, I didn't know one person in the supplement space when I decided to make the app and start doing the stuff on social media. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know one person. I did literally nothing, right? I just started doing, I had like 40 <laughs> followers. Mike was one of them and you know, the rest is history. <laughs> and uh, you know, so brands started to come to us asking for help and you were like, okay, we should make this a legitimate kind of thing. Cause what I kind of started to notice and you know, it, I get it that there's a network, right? We all have networks, Sure. Yep. but the, the network, it, <laughs> It's almost like a circle jerk in the industry sometimes of this person knows this person knows this person. So here you come to me, I'll get you into this retail. And it doesn't help. Like you just are seeing this constant like s cycle of just people come out with a brand and then, oh, I'll get it in my boy's stores and then nobody buys it and throw it out. And then we start another yeah. brand and kind of thing. So it wasn't really like helping anyone. Yeah, that is. No and, I, and I believe that happens in all industries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I do for sure. And of course, it happens in this one because it's it is a tight network. Tight. If you've been in this industry for 20 fucking years, mm -hmm. you have a hell of a contact list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You sure. have, you know, everybody and everything, and you've probably burnt people. They burnt you. You probably everybody knows each other. Bro, it's so it's, small. Oh yeah. I haven't been in it that and, long. and it's, but it's also that thing where you're like, all right, at some point, you know, that's part of being young and growing through it is, is you're going to learn what you're good at and what you shouldn't do. And it could, you could have pissed off one person that said like, told everybody, bro, this dude smoked me six years ago. And you're like, like, hey, dude, I knew I fucked up six years ago. Yeah. I don't do that shit no more. <laughs> and yeah. you better not fucking do that to the person you just said you don't right. do that anymore. Yeah. It's that type of thing. And it's difficult because it's a learning process. And if you're growing in an industry, it could be growing in like um, in anything. I worked in whenever I was a consultant. I was a consultant for as a safety man. And all I did was consult at other companies. I was hired to be people's mm -hmm. safety guy. Mm. But at other times, I was just a consultant. So yeah. I just tell you, hey. It's a really bad fucking idea. <laughs> it's a really bad fucking idea. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you understand you pay me a lot of fucking money to be here to tell you right. what you might and might not, should not, right. or yeah. don't hurt do. yourself. And it's kind of oh. crazy because, and then uh, I remember going to meetings and you're like, I'm like, this is just a group of this dude's fucking buddies. 
I was like, oh no, mm-hmm. oh no, this whole pad is full of people he- that are friends. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm like, this is a fucking shit show mm-hmm. because that means we're going to run fucking hard. Mm-hmm. Safety is taking a back fucking seat. There's a hundred people on this pad and I'm like, oh fuck. Yeah. Oh no, because there's a lot of money to be made. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. So I'm like, and if they're all buddies, if they're all buddies, that means there can be backdoor fucking things made. I'm like, mm-hmm. hey, I'm cool about backdoor deals. Everybody making cash and right. fun and all this good shit. But if you fucking hurt somebody here, it's going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, it's going to be a domino. And yeah. whenever I saw people get hurt, I mean, I remember I was on a pad in West Virginia. It was one of the first times I'd go to night work in West Virginia. It was a one way up, one way down on a, on, in West Virginia mm-hmm. on a fucking mountain. And uh, I'm like, man, this is a fucking nightmare. I'm taking my, my uh, boss at the time. He, uh, I had a company truck. So I'm taking this fucking brand new truck up this fucking hill, fucking it up. That's just how it was in the oil and gas industry. Yeah. And uh, I'm on this. And I'm like, man, this is a fucking rough pad. A little scary. Well, I'm there for maybe an hour and a half, two hours. I'm like, okay, this, this pad's running. I'm good. I did my inspection for the, on the guys that were doing water transfer. Well, the guys that were doing the fracking, one dude was working in, the, in whenever you frack, you need water, chemicals, mm-hmm. and sand. Mm-hmm. You're just shoving it as hard as you can down into a fucking hole mm-hmm. and fracking the ground. Um, the sand hog. Okay, there is uh, in there. There's a uh, a spindle that runs mm-hmm. and keeps the sand from clumping. Well, the dude saw a piece of plastic. Oh no, on I don't want to hear the end. Of and this. thought it was a good <laughs> idea to Jean Claude Van Damme it and grab that motherfucker. Uh, so he stuck his hand in sport. there, mm-hmm. pulled his fucking hand off. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Cut his hand right off. And yeah. I wasn't on the pad. I had left already. Yeah. And he got his hand fucking cut off. There was a helicopter pad up on top of the mountain. They had the helicopter come in because it was one way up, one way down with fucking trucks and mm-hmm. huge eighteen wheelers going up this fucking mountain. It was yeah. it was a nightmare. Wow. Yeah. And I'm like, holy fuck! So that was my first like welcoming into it, being like, shit, bad shit does happen. I mm-hmm. saw. So, Oh, I saw wild shit. Yeah, and that had, was just something I people, heard about. Yeah, we had people die. I mean, I told you I worked at GE for a while. And, you know, we're building trains, it's electrical. Yeah, we've had a f- we had a few people die. Yeah, and it was you know it was a great place to work. It, it was great for a lot of people there. Um, but it, safety was everything because it was so dangerous. And I just remember after a while, I was like, man, it's backbreaking work. It's dangerous. I was like, this is this is the mountaintop for some people. I was like, but. Not for me. I can't. I don't do this anymore. Well, it, 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 it's and it, that that's why it's like uh, it's tough because when you get wrapped up into it, and there's people that make six figures, absolutely good yeah. six figures doing yeah. that type of work, and mm-hmm. it's like, hey, like I've seen people lose fingers. The one dude, Dwayne, I'll never forget him. Awesome fucking it's dude. Always Dwayne. Like yeah. every time, Bro, like, we have like a couple Dwaynes that did that got hurt. So Bro, it's always Dwayne. Dwayne. <laughs> this dude was he was a foreman. He ran crews. I'm like, Dwayne is a fucking solid dude, but dude got no teeth. <laughs> like, Dwayne got no teeth. I think I know teeth. Dwayne. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? We why all is, know Dwayne. Why has yeah, Dwayne yeah, got no guys. teeth? And he's like an intel- like a halfway intelligent guy. Yeah. He's, he's like a charge. respected man yeah. here. Yeah. Dwayne got no teeth. He takes his fucking teeth out. <laughs> I see him on the dash. And I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, yeah. this is what? And so I didn't know. I worked with Dwayne. Mm-hmm. I was a consultant for that company. I worked with him. And this is probably like maybe six months go by. Mm-hmm. And I finally asked one of the dudes on the crew. I'm like, hey, dude. I was like. It's like, Dwayne's like, good dude. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, why has he got no teeth? <laughs> Dwayne's like in his late 40s. Yeah. And and then he says, oh, you didn't hear the story? I'm like, no, I didn't hear the fucking story. What am I supposed to say? Like, Dwayne, why do you got no teeth? Right. And right. he's like, yeah, go ask him. He'll tell you. And I'm like, fuck, dude. So now I'm like, I got to ask him because I want to know. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I go ask him. I'm like, hey, dude. I was like, I got to ask you. It's like, I've been wondering for a while. Yeah. You got no teeth. What's the, what's the gig? Why? What happened? He's like, nobody told you. Like, no, nobody fucking told me. So it turned out he was uh, he was trying to uh, um, he was trying to break a uh, break a nut loose off of uh, he was taking a pipe off and he was trying to break Spent. it loose. Slip. Had a uh, he had his uh, huge thirty six inch pipe wrench, mm-hmm. massive fucking pipe wrench. Because in the oil and gas industry, everything's fucking it's bigger. Mm-hmm. Well, he put a six foot cheater bar on it. Okay, mm-hmm. and or a breaker bar, however anybody, anybody wants to say it. Yeah. And all that is is say you have a 36 mm-hmm. inch pipe wrench and you're taking off a huge pipe. Okay, yeah. 36 inches. Usually on a cheater bar, some companies don't even allow them to be used, but mm-hmm. you need more leverage. Mm-hmm. So on that, you use twice the length of the pipe that you're breaking. That's an understanding industry concept. Mm-hmm. Industry understood there, and it was so three foot, six foot. Bro puts a th- six foot cheater bar on this thing, and he's fucking wrenching. 
pulling down on it. And it doesn't break loose. He releases it. doesn't break oh, loose. No. And it came back and whacked all of his fucking teeth out of his face. Good Shoved God. teeth up into his gums. Knocked all of them out. They were fucking gone. Broke his jaw the whole nine. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, like, I'm like... So, like, got no teeth. Like, never fixed them. He's like, they can't get fixed. He broke his shit so bad that he could not put implants into his mouth. Wow. And if you get implants, to do an implant on your mouth. It's like mm-hmm. a whole mouth. It's like 45 grand or yeah, something. Yeah, something like, like a like grand that. a tooth or something. Yeah, like a, whole, like a really nice car. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so, like, at, whenever I started hearing these wild, like, in oil and gas, you die. Uh-huh. Oil and gas is big risk. Certain yeah. things are big, high risk. Yeah. And that was one I'll never forget. And I'm like, hey, cheater bars. Shouldn't use them. No. Yeah. Sometimes that's the only option. Yeah. Like, I get it. That's the, 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 the practicality of the industry. But I'm like, last fucking resort, gentlemen. Yeah. And I better yeah. not fucking be here. And you better not fucking hurt yourself. And if you do, you're fucked. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Jesus. I came in. We had did a lot of, like, high-tension electrical stuff. And then <laughs> this one guy, uh, he was training me on this job. And was, he's like, this is, this is dangerous. This is a dangerous machine. I'm like, okay. And he's like... He's got no teeth, you know, kind of whole thing. Just uh, he goes, he's like, here's the thing, though. As you're running all this high tension wire and all this other stuff, he goes, don't ever stick your finger where you wouldn't stick your dick. Yep. And I was like, man, that is because there was a lot of times where you like go to reach. And I'm like, I wouldn't put my. No, I'm not. I'm so not that was. My, so I was. Uh, stick your I finger was. Where you wouldn't stick your dick. I was still this guy yeah. as a safety guy. Foul mouthed. I was a like, fuck off. And I said those things in meetings. And whenever we go to pinch points and people talk about things, I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. like, I get it. Yeah. I fucking have done blue collar work my whole yeah, life. Just... Some of this big stuff, no, I haven't. But don't stick your finger where you wouldn't stick your dick. Yeah. That's okay, a lot so of it's a thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fuck yeah. I mean, that was one of those things where I was like, huh. <laughs> so then, okay. like, I was certified to teach everything. Like, the company I worked for, he went and made sure I was, I trained the trainer on everything. I fucking traveled everywhere and mm-hmm. I taught everything under the sun. Um, and uh, the other one was bloodborne pathogens. Oh yeah, we have a lot to talk about. Oh sure. yeah, and it was, uh, and, and my whole thing was, if it's wet and not yours, don't touch it. There you yeah. go. I heard that one too. That's and good. it's kind of like, yeah, if it's wet and not yours, don't touch it. Don't it's like, man, it. all right. Yeah. But then also, you know, as a safety guy, you're kind of HR in certain categories, and here mm-hmm. I am, motherfucking the world, and <laughs> talking about wet and not yours, not touching yeah. all this, and I'm like, yeah, all right. Jeez. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, no, and there's. We could go on and on, but industry yeah. crossover of that, and uh, we got on it because, like, just being networked in a certain industry, I think it happens in everything. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, think it happens no matter what you're in. If you were in the fucking, I don't, I don't even know, re- the restaurant business. Mm-hmm. If you're in anything, it's all, everybody knows each other. Yep. I don't know if it was the same way with you, and in, in, well, I'm guessing it was. Like, for me, uh, everyone was in horrible shape. Because they're, everyone worked a shit ton of hours. There's a lot of stress. You're working as much overtime as possible. Because, like you said, I mean, you can make $200,000. I mean, you know. You was, can be a half a moron from yeah. society standpoint, a fucking deplorable, however you want to say it, <laughs> and make 120 yeah. to 200 grand a year yeah, from being a skilled craftsman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, but, you know, what I know is like a lot of people, they just. They wanted, or they would say they want to make, you know, I need to lose weight. I just need to do this kind of thing. And that's where I think like most people and Jacob and I have been talking a lot about this uh, lately is, you know, the supplement industry becomes very small sometimes. And there's so many people out there sort of like that, that are looking for some kind of answer, but they need to be approached in the way that makes sense for them. And that's where I see a lot of like us when we, like we do content and things like that, it sort of gets off track because we only help a certain group of people who maybe already are kind of into it. Cause when we start to talk about certain things, we lose yeah. a big group of people when they really might just want to know something like the simplest concepts sort of go over the head. And that's why I, we constantly yeah. have to remind ourselves that we kind of lose people sometimes. Well, well And also um, whenever you're in a sense pioneering this type of thing, um, the industry also changes. It's cyclical. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because whenever you think about it right now, just noticing how YouTube's working and how content is being is happening, mm-hmm. I look at it and I'm like, man, like things have changed in the past five years. Yeah. So if you've been in the industry ten years, you've watched it change a number yeah. of times. You've watched the whole concept of of training, education from a supplement standpoint, nutritional standpoint. Studies get done because it's ever evolving. Mm-hmm. But also, there's always a new group of people. Like, dude. 
If you're 18 years old and you're new to this, you haven't seen anything from five years ago. You were 13, motherfucker. Yep. yep. And then you're kind of re-educating that, but they learn in a different mm-hmm. way than five years ago. Yeah. So, and then it's... So I always it's, like to use the uh, myostatin inhibitor, rev, like, revolution. That comes mm-hmm. back every five years. I mm-hmm. kid you guys not. And oh. I know I'm young, but, like, my mentors have kind of told me, he's like, hey, dude, it's coming. Myostatin inhibitor is coming. There. You're going to see the pictures of the cows again. You're going to see you them know? again? I, that, I, I swear yeah. to Christ, it's yep. been three every, or four times I've seen yep. it. Yeah. Every few years. I remember being 17 mm-hmm. years old. Driving truck for my dad, and I'm like, yeah, I remember going and picking it up when it was yep. a big thing. It was oh, in a man. white bottle. Uh-huh. MHP. They made one. I can't right. remember. I can't remember what it was called, but it had the cow yep. on the back, and I was like, oh, it's gonna make me like this. Yeah, mm-hmm. fuck yeah, I'm gonna take three. It was some day. kind of it's collagen awesome. peptide mm-hmm. or something, but yeah, I remember that being a big deal, and it does. It goes in cycles. It does, know? and and that's something hard for you guys, mm-hmm. uh, just re-educating people, mm-hmm. and then because. Uh, they're going to learn different. Right. Well, um, yeah. a, a, a boomer learns different than a Gen Z or a Gen X and yeah. all that. And it's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. They do. And how they're they attracted to different, too, from a marketing standpoint. How you know? they absorb different information. It's, yeah. And that's why, I mean, that's why big companies spend fucking tens of millions of dollars on marketing to certain generations yeah. of people. That's so true. And that's something that just on a much, 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 much smaller scale, mm-hmm. we have to be cognizant right. of. And that's like the discussion on like how things can actually help uh, people's regular lives, like supplements. Um, one thing that we like discuss all the time is a lot of these review, you know, platforms or things that we see online, it's really appealing to either myself, the retailer trying to sell me a product Mm -hmm. or to people who are other brand owners or supplement company owners. And so kind of like our goal with, um, if we get into like product, like reviewing and discussion when we educate consumers is like, okay, let's actually apply this to the real person on the ground level that walks into a retail store Mm -hmm. or that clicks on your link on the website. How can it help them? And, and, and it goes back to just good companies producing good products. Mm-hmm. Right. Because for us, it was the investment in the beginning. Like, mm-hmm. I want a really good products. And Pat's like, fuck, these are really expensive. <laughs> what kind of money do we have? What's the capital we're working mm-hmm. with? And mm-hmm. I just remember, I remember our first POs. I remember our first PO. And then, like, I was like, fuck, that's a lot of money. And Pat, Pat said, <laughs> he said, got to have a backup PO, too. And I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, mm-hmm. what do you mean? He's like, well, what happens if we sell out? Yeah. And I'm like, well, how long does it take to get like things back in? And he's like, about eight weeks. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, and that's being conservative. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Think about right now, it's like double that. Oh, oh God. Right now, yeah. there's companies it's saying 24 weeks. I'm like, yeah. what so the bad. fuck do you expect people to do for 24 weeks? Yeah. Like, you can't even play. And that's you saying that. Like, I don't trust fucking you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why having a good working relationship with your manufacturers is a good idea. Yes. And having POs that are fucking stacked, that are, mm-hmm. that are, that are stacked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And but at the same time, all so many so many things that come into play that we we spend days here yeah. talking about. Mm-hmm. But that's why uh, it's good to understand all those things. But I, I remember, remember we went, it was it was intense. Mm-hmm. But having good products, it's um uh, like we have so many flavors, and we continue to come out with new flavors of products. Every single one isn't going to fuck. Mm. All I mean, it, put it this way: I think they all do because I like them. However. I have favorites. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have a number you know, six. What, what fucks for you might not fuck for everybody else. So it was it, exactly. So whenever it comes to it, it's like if there's seven <laughs> flavors of the grind, it's like I have my one through seven, yeah. dude. Yeah. I know which one yeah. I like the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my number one is not other people's. Sometimes yeah. my number one is other people's number seven. They're like, dude, what's your number one? I think uh, Red Icy okay. is my number See, one. I'm a shark bite guy. See, mm-hmm. shark bite's my number two. Okay, Deadlifts yeah. and Gummy Bears is number three. Mm-hmm. But then we have new flavors coming out this summer yeah. oh, that yeah. are out of fucking control, and I'm stupid pumped about it, and I'm like, fuck, dude. One of these actually is kind of better than my number one, I'm, which is hard to yeah, say. I'm really excited. <laughs> what are you going on, Shane? <laughs> well, we got to watch. That's a mic. Uh, (laughs) but um but yeah so i think that uh uh, and that's the fun part about it because at the end of the day now i know we have great products i know our ingredients are are phenomenal our formulations are great um it's hard to deviate from them because they are still leading the industry in their categories Mm -hmm. and i'm like we've talked about reformulating things i'm like no there's no fucking way why why yeah so and then we come and because we have other formulas that i think could do exceptionally well in the industry but i'm like yeah, but hydraulic still is the fucking number one, dude. It's still mm-hmm. it still fucks. It's the mm-hmm. number one in my yeah. opinion. I don't mm-hmm. think there are other pump pre workout products. Uh, there's not a better pump, legitimately pump pre workout out there. Mm-hmm. Period. It's not. Yeah. No. O- overall, I that's yeah. and that's my opinion. Right. But I'm like other. We have other formulas. We know yeah. other things that we were doing. Mm-hmm. We, of course, we're always mm-hmm. innovating and thinking and talking and yeah. doing what we can. But 
whenever you have great products, that's where the marketing becomes so fun. Mm -hmm. It's where the flavoring becomes fun. Yeah. That's where when people know their product, they're, they're, they like the pre-workouts that they're getting. Now it's about the flavor. Mm -hmm. It's about the label. It's about the fun. It's about everything that is on top of the ingredients and formulas itself. That's something, yeah, you guys, uh, that's something they've done really well. You know, Instead yeah. of coming out with a new product, it says, hey, we have a good thing going. Right. Let's just add a new flavor and really make a badass yeah. marketing campaign behind and that have flavor. Fun. Yeah. And it's awesome. Because yeah. we know a lot of it is what's new. Yeah. And and you have to stay in front of people. But we get that all the time because uh, I get a lot of, uh, like, the dog sort of turning their head. You know, when you say when you hear a weird sound, is like I, I'll get people come to me all the time. And they'll say, they'll send me, it'll be like a, someone starting a supplement company. And like, Justin, what do you think about this formula? And my first question, I was like, well, what do you what do you intend on doing with this? And uh, I don't care about your dosage and stuff. But what's the plan? Yeah. Like, is this? <clears throat> are you? Are That's you? Tough, dude. What's your and it's That's like tough to say. And they're like, I don't understand. What do you mean? Like, what do you think of the dosages? I'm like, well, what? Like, how much is? Where are you manufacturing? How much is it going to cost you? What kind of runs are you doing? Are you going retail? I was like, you're doing like that's what's your plan? Is the problem? What's like, your business every, plan? Everybody can come up with a formula. It's not that hard to just. I mean, just you just. Up, yeah. It's really not hard. No. But then also, like what you said, which is a thousand percent true. I think some people pushed against this because a lot of companies used to use this as an excuse to just make shit products. But there is a way to balance out your ingredients too that make more sense. You know, a certain amount of you mentioned dynamine. I've found a specific dosage of dynamine that is fucking amazing, and it's not the max dose. So uh -huh. I never use the max dose when I make a formula. And it's like the little things like that that you sort of like can Hi figure out. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what's crazy because I remember high doses of dynamine and people were like, I have fucking, they were talking about headaches. And I'm like, yes, it's going to occur. Mm -hmm. Because you're not just taking dynamine, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. You're also taking, what, what's the other stimulants they got in there? Because I know dynamine's not the only one. You know, yeah. so yeah, exactly. it, it, it plays a yeah. huge role. And, and, and how much water you drank also plays a huge mm -hmm. role whenever you're talking about mm -hmm. stimulants and what you ate and Tons of different factors come into play because yep. usually studies are done in, a, in somewhat of a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, then and very rarely on and yeah. then, trained, and, healthy individuals. And I get I get excited because I'm like, some of the people that love high stimulant pre-workouts are the people that drink fucking monsters in the morning, mm. drink or drink coffee in the morning, monster in the afternoon after lunch, and then they go to the fucking gym. And I'm like, how much water did you drink? Mm. Like half a gallon <laughs> a day? Mm -hmm. yeah. Fuck, dude, your head's going to throb. Mm -hmm. and the, and, but it's that's part process of learning and, and, and uh, just the experience of it all mm -hmm. but yeah that's the fun part and i always say this to people they they want the the answer right they want to walk in the door and say i want the thing that's going to change my life and i say that's that's great and there's a lot of companies making some really cool stuff out there i was like but i was like what you don't understand is that's robbing yourself of the fun stuff i was like now granted i don't want you to go out there and buy something dangerous or something that conflicts with maybe some Medicaid because everybody takes prescription medications. I'm finding that out over the years. And it's like <laughs> all this stuff kind of ties in. So I was like, it's sort of like if you went into the gym and then like one day later, your physique completely changed and, and you're really happy with yourself in the mirror and like that would be cool. But you would have missed out on so much like valuable lessons getting to that point that it's like I'm like, I don't ever want to rob people of that experience part of it because that's the type of stuff that you can apply to, you know, a lot of other aspects in your life too. Very good point. Very good point. So we have Justin Hall, Supplement Snoop Supplement on Snoop. on Instagram. I'm Go follow him. What's that? I'm on there every day, every like day. answering questions every day. He's yeah. relentless. <laughs> Consistency, I, well, I mean, you know, if you go, I mean, it's incredible. There's times I'm like, I'm sitting down at nighttime and I, I go yeah. through stories and I'm like, holy fuck, <laughs> dude, look at the dots. It's a dotted line. I'm yeah. like, yeah. all right. Yep. Um, so on Instagram, Shane will put it in the bio, make sure everything's yeah. there. Uh, awesome. Join the app as well. It's a great educational mm -hmm. tool about all supplements. I know we stroked me off here with how great my company is, but there are other companies out there that do a great job. There are other products out there that are good because to think that there's not other things out there is crazy, but mm -hmm. I, I'm just going to sell myself. They are the fucking best. <laughs> I'm awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they are pretty awesome. <laughs> but, and, and it's something that I think is great because the industry needs, uh, they need people like yourselves that are willing to invest the time, energy uh, in education and doing good. And mm -hmm. uh, Jacob Davis, yes, sir. the supplement 
or uh, the nutrition, the nutrition store. store. Nope, I keep yeah, saying no, you're fine, man. Store. It's, uh, it's just the nutrition TNS. store. TNS. All LLC. I remember is, uh, to hey. be honest, like, so uh, <laughs> on Instagram, I'm like, T, it's tits and ass. It's, yeah, that's exactly what it stands for. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad TNS, you picked up on that. All yeah. I see is I'm like, TNS, yeah. tits and ass, tits yeah, and yeah, ass. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, I was so opposed <laughs> to that acronym when I first started. I was like, we're going to keep we're gonna keep it away from the three-letter thing. It's going to be the nutrition store. And I was like, I just got lazy. So it's TNS. Yep, that's awesome. Yeah, the nutrition store LLC is where we do most of our stuff on Instagram. We are content creators. We do a lot yeah, of really yeah <laughs> yes. we do a lot of great videos and i think a lot of people learn a lot from mm -hmm. them and um so yeah well, yeah no uh content creator you have the stores you're 25 years old you've had your store one for three years and now mm -hmm. you're ready to open up another one yeah we're gonna try to make our uh, big three-year anniversary party um as with the grand opening uh, nice you know so our, th our two-year uh he was there ooh. we had ooh, half ooh, the industry set. fly in been there. yeah ooh. the christmas party too we had what well, ghost flew down uh, like a lot of brands it was, it was good wild. times but it was no industry stuff it was just yeah a party. no it was all just for just fun party. you know if you if you come there and, and expect to set up a booth as a supplement company yeah, you're you're up. not welcome like we're, we're here to have fun so well, and that's that's the other part life is a life is a blast i think we yeah. talked about just as much about life as we did anything else mm -hmm. and that's part of it is is you still got to enjoy yourself you oh, still yeah. got to let loose and and but no matter what it is it's about having fun and exactly. doing a good job especially now too i think we realized with the two year party i think we all you know covid had been going on for a little while and we had this get together and it was the first time people had seen each other in a while mm -hmm. and we're like man it was an eye cuz then we were like we got to do this again yeah how about Christ Christmas? The Christmas party was stupid. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh my God, there was throw up in corners that I didn't know existed. Oh, oh man, I mean, yeah, don't don't let a supplement company like fund the beer, the alcohol, the DJ. Uh, it was a great time, it but was a great time. oh man. Uh, so I'll I'll tell one more story before we get out of here, just because <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, like yeah. we are fuck offs. Yeah. You guys have realized that. Like it's I, I I always take the motto from the blue collar, like just my dad, like work hard, play hard. My dad, motherfucker, that dude still does his best out work me. I think I got him now, but anyway. Whenever that dude would show up somewhere, mm -hmm. like life of the fucking party, yeah. my dad might show up late, but he was coming to fucking have fun. Yeah. So it was like work hard, play hard. Um, so whenever uh, I was sponsored by Muscle Tech, and we were out in Vegas, okay, and uh, the, the head of sales, I want to say, he had just come over from Bacardi. He was the head of sales over at Bacardi or like a district or some shit. Like he was a big deal yeah. there, but he came to Muscle Tech, and I'm like, this dude was a fuck off. <laughs> he was a complete fuck off yeah and i'm like i was like i kind of like this guy because i'm just out of college you know right. i was partying my balls off in college i was a fucking nutcase and this guy's here and i started getting along with him and we're we're fucking partying i'm like it's like boy this is a shit show so he started becoming the life of the party and telling stories about bacardi <laughs> like the things that went on there and i'm like get the fuck out of here like i didn't know how big a degenerates like big time adults were yeah <laughs> i thought it was just yeah. me in college you know <laughs> right. and i'm like no this like, is great right this dude was a fucking nut job and he was telling us about the parties he would have when he was at bacardi and like the big thing for like whenever he would hand in like a, a night of partying like was a business trip or some mm -hmm. shit or whatever it was it was the only thing that was frowned upon was buying anything that bacardi didn't own mm. or uh, have a hand in something mm -hmm. And he remembers he bought like he's like, bro, we ran up like a fucking eight thousand dollar tab at this one bar. And I'm oh, like, bro, wow. what? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, I got shit from the from his boss or the owners or whoever it was for buying fourteen dollars worth of something else. It wasn't the fucking <laughs> bill. Oh it was God. the fourteen dollars wow. from this. And he's like, he he's like, I'll never fucking forget it. I'm like, mm. really? And he's like, oh yeah. He's like, that was it. But wow. just and then the stories he told about their Christmas parties. Mm -hmm. I still want to do this. I'm going to tell everybody on the podcast now because they're going to listen because it's too fucking funny not to tell. So he said that at their Christmas party, at Bacardi's Christmas party, yeah. um, they, had, uh, they had a hypnotist come in, but it was one of those like, uh, like X-rated hypnotists. Uh -huh. oh, so they would God. come in and there was people and they were like, it was voluntary to go up on stage and have the hypnotist hypnotize you but do sexual things. Uh -huh. So if you were easily hypnotizable, if that's a fucking word, yeah. <laughs> You, they were like, then they'd ask people to go up. Well, there was people that went up there, like the secretary and like oh God. All, all kinds of people that were like kind of reserved, but they liked to party, you know, they were there. Mm -hmm. And he's like, they fucking had the secretary up there fucking just all kinds of wild stuff. <laughs> they said like, okay, like here's, here's this handful of straws. Oh, man. And they're like, this handful of straws <laughs> is your husband and you haven't seen him for two months because he's oh been away working for the family. And this thing of straws is your husband's dick. 
and they were like, bro, this fucking secretary went nuts oh on these fucking God. straws, and everybody's losing it and carrying on and fucking going wild. And I'm like, bro, this is a wild Christmas party. And he's Hell like, yeah. it oh. was nuts. And he's like, and then they had, it was like, uh, like they had guys up there. Oh, no. They brought up a bunch of guys that would work there, some in sales, some in uh, shipping, customer service, whatever it was. And they had guys up there, and their best move. So oh, like he laid nice. them all on the ground, yeah. and these dudes are all hypnotized. They have no clue what's going on, and their best move out there on on the stage. Like, what's your best move in bed? I'm like, bro, oh. that would be fucking. A, that, that would be, be an absolute hilarious. ride. Hilarious. That is amazing. Don't yeah. get any ideas. Mm. Huh? Don't get any ideas. Oh, bro, I <laughs> no, I, so year. I I looked yeah. them up. I could. There's none in Pittsburgh. Yeah, uh, thank God. <laughs> there's none thank in Pittsburgh. God. We'll take the party somewhere but, else, I guess. But I was like, I was like, man, just just uh, thinking of remembering honestly, all half that the guys stuff. here don't need to be hypnotized, man. No, they'll show you their best move. That's true. <laughs> It actually happened. I mean, yeah, at we, the Christmas party. Actually. Oh God, yeah, it really did happen. Well, Christmas yeah, party. yeah. It, but that's the thing that's supposed to be fun about also mm -hmm. letting loose and enjoying it. But yeah, uh, mm -hmm. those are got to. Yeah, our Christmas party's a shit show. It's yeah. good hearing yeah. other people's yeah. is a shit show too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I like, it's, it well, was, I like what you said about it, you realize like when you're younger and then you get a little bit older, you're like, wow, you just have more money to do dumber shit. Yeah, like, that's, that's it. it. So <laughs> you, you got definitely don't yep. grow up. Fuck no, I don't want to. I that's the other thing. I don't think. Tits and ass and boners won't ever not be cool. No. no so I, now I understand why like 75-year-old men are fucking perverts. I need to yeah. know yeah. How, how to get, and then get away pillows. with pillows. Yeah. I need one of those pillows. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll make that happen. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Gentlemen, yeah. thank uh, you guys thank for coming you. on. Yeah, you, man. Everybody, make sure you guys are supporting these. If you are in the South Carolina area. Come check us out. The Nutrition Store. That's TNS. Right. That's us. Awesome. Yeah, Supplement Snoop. Yes, sir. Join yeah. the group. It's awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks, man.